August, what a month. Things happen in August, many, many things. I spent most of last month running benchmark after benchmark after benchmark. And I suppose that's not that unusual, though I have to say last month, it really was a slog. Having been just hit with Ryzen 3 uh, late in July, so the month prior, we were then hit with Threadripper in early August, but damn, that thing was a lot of fun to test. And before the Threadripper dust even had a chance to settle, AMD came out swinging once again, this time with Vega, though uh, fewer punches landed on that one. <laughs> in between all the chaos, there was plenty more going on here at the Harbour Unbox channel, so this is the monthly recap. Getting the ball rolling last month was your boy, Tim, and wowee, did the young fella make a big mistake in what ultimately turned out to be a really successful video. So Tim got his hands on the ASUS MX34VQ, an ultra-wide monitor boasting support for the 3440 by 1440 resolution, 100Hz refresh, and 1800R curvature. It also packs a frameless design, QI wireless charger, and an impressive three-year warranty. All of this for $750 US makes this one of the cheapest models available, boasting this impressive array of specifications. The problem being that a worryingly large amount of viewers commenting on that video didn't seem to understand that cheap is a relative term. Tim titled that video ASUS MX34VQ Cheap 100Hz 1440p Ultra Wide Monitor. An appropriate title, at least Tim and myself foolishly believed before releasing the video. A good number of commenters were outraged that we called a $750 US monitor cheap, uh, despite the fact that they failed to provide any evidence of anything cheaper. Mind you, cheap doesn't actually mean cheapest, but even so, uh, counter arguments were interesting. For example, Jose paid just $180 US for a Korean 27 inch 100Hz 1440 display. And that's cool, probably a pretty good deal, but it's also considerably smaller, works at a lower resolution, and is questionable in terms of build quality. It's also certainly not frameless, nor curved. Oh, and it comes with a limited one year warranty, uh, a questionable limited warranty at that. Nino says, $700 isn't cheap. I was expecting like $400. Uh, you heard it here, folks. $400 is the new cheap. Apparently, it is a relative term. Then Jack swoops in with the save, but instantly taken out of context. Anyway, when I get my Core i9 7980XE later this month, I'll probably go and call it cheap in the title since it will technically be cheap for an 18-core processor, even at the stupid $2,000 price tag. I guess I'm just a bit of a troll. Moving on before I continue to look at more humorous comments, we did have a battle royale between the Ryzen 7 1700 and Core i7-7820X. This was an application and gaming comparison and the results were quite interesting. So if you're thinking of buying either, I suggest checking that one out. Diego won top comment on that one. I have to appreciate him sharing the love. Then what by 101 pointed out a serious flaw in my testing methodology, which I have since corrected. After the serious benchmarking session, it was time to relax and do a little unboxing. This time for Unboxing Boxes episode 33, we had Threadripper on deck, and it was a heap of fun. Overall, that really was a fun video that went down well, though I did trigger a few people with how casual I went about the whole thing. Thankfully, though, I was able to set the record straight recently with a second Threadripper unboxing. A truly massive CPU. I'm so tempted to see if that's... Now... The temptation here is to go, wow, that's a sexy looking processor, but it's in an orange caddy and that's just gross. I don't want to do my B-roll with that gross orange thing around. Let's take it out. Don't do that. I know the temptation's there. You do that, you're going to trigger the whole internet. People are going to tell you that you're a moron because you need this orange thing to install it. I don't care if you put text on the screen saying, be careful with the orange thing. Don't throw it away because it's important. Don't, just don't take it out. There's no need. Then Tim was back at it again, this time rustling a few less feathers with his OnePlus 5 battery life test. Those keen on smartphone battery life should check this one out. Tim tested well over a dozen popular phones. Next up, we have the Ryzen 3 Ultimate Gaming Benchmark Guide, and this was part one of a three-part series. This video went down a treat. You guys really seem to like the benchmark method used here, so I'll certainly do more of this in the future. That said, Amras wasn't too impressed. I love this comment so much, I just had to pin it. Amras has only ever made a single comment on the channel, but he made up for the lack of quantity with this little gem. 
finally unsubscribed. I'm so sick of this guy. He's trying to create the perception that AMD is worse than Nvidia and Intel all the time. It can be reasonable, but even if he says good stuff about AMD, he always makes me feel like he doesn't approve of what he says. I don't find him sincere. <laughs> Damn. One minute I'm an NVIDIA shill, the next minute an AMD shill, and I guess if you give it another minute, probably an Intel shill. You guys really need to get together and get on the same page. Thing I really love about this level-headed comment is the fact that 72 other people were like, yeah, right on, bud. Give that an upvote. Or maybe they just upvoted it without reading it because I pinned it. Either way, thanks to Amras for the laughs. Shame we lost you, though. Ever wonder what the difference between FreeSync and G-Sync is and how they compare in 2017? Well, good, because Tim put together a 10 minute long video covering that very topic. It was a very informative bit by Tim. We also learnt in the comment section that Shrek has D-Sync. That must be a new technology that we haven't heard of. And Disarm Scroll thinks I look weird. Will you look weird? Oh, uh, wait, it was, <laughs> that was a video with Tim. Haha, <laughs> uh... All right, back to some serious business with another Unboxing Boxes episode. For this one, though, I was really just taking a break from all the Threadripper testing, and, of course, what did I get? More Threadripper motherboards to test. It wasn't long, though, before I got back to some more Threadripper content, this time with a sexy RGB build. This one was a heap of fun, and as usual, I enjoyed reading through the comments. My mate Brian from over at Tech yes City stopped by with a few tips. He thought I was wasting far too much time using a credit card to spread the thermal grease. The Yes Man doesn't mess around with such nonsense. Anyway, if colourful rainbow builds get you excited, then be sure to check that one out. Finally, after much hype, the Threadripper review went live with the 1950X and 1920X, and they lived up to expectations. As it stands, the 1950X is the fastest desktop CPU on the market, though that could change later in the month as the bigger 16-core and 18-core Core i9 parts arrive. That video received over 1,000 comments, and we did have some familiar faces towards the top of the stack, including Jared's Tech, Jim from Adored TV, and that crazy Kiwi Kev from Tech Showdown. Both Jim and Kev asked if I'm switching switching a Threadripper as my main rig, and the answer is yes, very soon, and that's going to be an exciting series. Moving on, Tim checked out the new Asus Zephyrus, and that was a really sleek looking laptop packing a GTX 1080, and as expected, Tim really liked it. Despite the amazing design and impressive hardware, the price wasn't that extreme, and in fact was cheaper than quite a few other GTX 1080 laptops. So if you're in need of a gaming laptop that packs a serious punch, check out Tim's review. After that, I was back, and this time with yet another episode of Unboxing Boxes. For this one, I got an awesome new X399 motherboard, an impressive GTX 1080 Ti from a viewer, and I told a rather unusual story about my RX Vega sample. That episode was once again a heap of fun, so check it out if you haven't already. A few days later, I had AMD's Radeon Vega 56 in hand, and I threw 25 games at it, testing 1080p, 1440p, and the 4K resolution. That one was also a blast, loads of benchmarks, plenty of great comments, and Vega 56 looked okay, certainly better than Vega 64, which I was yet to test at the time. Tying us over once again was Tim with another high-end gaming laptop review, this time checking out the Aorus X5 V7. It's quite a short name for a laptop. What we have here is an overclockable GTX 1070 powered laptop sporting a 4K G-Sync enabled display, but is it any good? I don't know, go watch the video and let me know. Then it was once again time to get very serious. I mean, what's up with the Harbour Unboxed RX Vega results? There was a little bit of drama, bit of controversy from the 25 game Vega 56 review, so I decided to address that with a video, and well, it went surprisingly well. Who would have thought? I didn't call Vega cheap, so I think that's where I kept out of trouble for the most part. Putting the Vega controversy behind us was part two of the Ryzen 3 Ultimate Gaming Benchmark Guide. This time we were checking out the overclocking performance. Only 22 dislikes and over 1700 likes on that one. I'll have to study it to work out the formula of not offending people. Mui Copyright did have this to say though. Blah 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 Ryzen blah 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 who cares. I mean, it does have Ryzen 3 as the first word in the title, so I replied with this. Sorry, I don't know why YouTube does this. You would think by now they knew how to deliver their users with content that is appropriate for them. Fine, YouTube, I'll do your job for you. Then you click on this link and zapped it. Next up, another unboxing. Damn it, I did a lot of these last month. Anyway, I checked out a new X399 board and then walked out on you guys never to return. And that was met with mixed reactions in the comment section. 
While I was leaving you guys hanging, Tim was getting ready to release his Corsair Void Pro headset review. We don't do many peripheral reviews on the channel these days, so this was a change of pace for sure. Those that watched the video seem to really enjoy it, and I believe Tim is still using the Void Pros as we speak. Then finally, the last installment in the three-part Ryzen 3 Ultimate Benchmark Guide series. This time we checked out, is it worth upgrading Ryzen 3 from the Core i5-2500K or FX8370 CPUs? Some pretty shocking results in that one, I have to say. Definitely worth checking out if you're rocking an older generation CPU and thinking of upgrading. While I was working on the last few videos we've talked about, I was also slowly benchmarking my way through this one. Uh, boy, oh boy, was it a grind. So for this video, we have not 25 games, not 30 games, but for some unexplainable reason, 32 games. Yeah, I have no idea what I was thinking there, really. Anyway, here we have the results for both the air and liquid cool versions of Vega 64, along with Vega 56 and a heap of other relevant cards in 32 games. A big thanks to Appleton McCool for creating the video index on this one. I honestly didn't have the energy to get it done. After that mega benchmark session, I decided to relax a little bit and play the new F1 2017 video game. While I was at it, I tried a few different hardware configurations and ended up doing a quick benchmark showdown between Vega 56 and the GTX 1070. If you're an F1 race fan, I suggest checking it out. Then finally, after months and months of planning, it was time to announce the new Upgrade My PC Please series, and I was super excited to let you guys know about it. The announcement video did very well and generated over 800 submissions, many of which were very good. If you missed that video, please go check it out. The more people we can get involved in this series, the better. On that note, please be aware submissions are only open to a few select regions for now, but of course anyone can watch the series, and by voting you can go in the running to win global giveaways each week with some pretty awesome prizes. I was a bit disappointed with how many people said they downvoted that series because it wasn't in their region. It's really disappointing to learn that that's the mentality of some of the sub base. I really didn't think you guys would do this. I mean, we're paying for all of this out of our own back pocket, and of course we want to expand the series globally, it's just very difficult and costly to do so. Once we start to see a return on investment, we will indeed expand the series. For now though, we do appreciate the support so many of you have shown, and we'll continue to work hard to make the series bigger and better for everyone. While everyone was getting their Upgrade My PC Please submissions ready, I decided to play around with Destiny 2 and create a What Does It Take to Play episode. This time I was targeting 1440p gameplay with at least 60fps, and it turns out the game is quite easy to run even on mid-range hardware, so that was a nice discovery. Then it was time for some serious Destiny 2 benchmarking, so I took 30 GPUs and threw them at the game testing 1080p, 1440p and the 4K resolutions. This one was a heap of work, but it was really well received and I do really appreciate all the support and amazing feedback you guys gave. It's videos like these that I get to appreciate just how awesome the Harbour Unboxed fan base is. Well, that does it for last month. 25 videos in total, though. It was technically 26, but... For reasons I've already discussed on the channel, I did pull down my Vega pricing video. I'm still waiting to see how that one plays out for now. Uh, but yeah, for now, demand still heavily outweighing the supply and HBM2 memory pricing is becoming a real concern as well. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how things look later in the year. Anyway, as always, a really big thank you to everyone who tuned in last month, watched all our videos and showed their support. I really do appreciate all of you. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys.